Alright, so welcome back. So we've got our game list here, we've got our layouts all working and everything, so I hope you understand how all those views and, and layouts work, which is um, which is quite easy. So what I want to do is, I just want to I want to start to bring out our products, because we have a really default standard view with nothing on there. So let's um, use the functions that we created in the second lesson to, to do that. So if we just go products equals find products just like that then if we come up to our shop and our index file we can start to get rid of this stuff set up a for each loop for each products oops products as product Make sure that's got an R in it. Just go like that. Say so N for each. And then inside here, I just want to create um, a div, and I just want to call this one product. And I just want to go inside here, and I just want to create a H3. Just, whoops, H3. And I just want to set up the title. Remember that this has got the array in it, this here. And we're just looping over it and we're just getting the keys out of the array. There's nothing fancy going on here. It's very standard. If you're getting lost, you may want to do the other lessons. Um, I go into it a little bit more detail in the other ones, but there comes a time when I have to start to... Um, just sort of move along and just expect you guys to know a little bit of stuff. Because I do know you guys are clever cookies, man. No doubt about it. Um, so I'll just do a refresh. And as you can see there, we've got all that happening. Just got to make sure I'm closing off that hedge 3 tag so we don't get everything headlined. So there you go. So we've got our products coming out. Another thing that we're going to need is an add to cart button. Okay. And to add things to carts, Generally, you need just the ID and the quantity you want on there, because that's what your cart is. It just holds the, the ID of the product and the quantity you have of that product. So let's do that. Um, let's say a href, and we'll just say index.php, and we'll just say question mark view equals add to cart. Okay, and we'll do ampersand, and we'll say ID that's the idea of the product. Grab this stuff and we'll just throw that on there. Minimize that out the way. Change that to ID. Make sure we close off that. Close off our A tag and say add to cart. And we'll do a refresh. See that? See down here? Look down here when I roll over. See that? It's got the ID of the our cart, and it's got the add to cart view. So when I click on that, it's going to go to that view. But that view doesn't exist, and that's fine. Okay, so we'll go back into our index file. We'll come down here. I'm just going to create a little a redirect here. So to do a redirect, just type in the header function. Okay, and then we just set up a location. Oops. Okay, and now we can just say where we want that to go. So, I just want people when they add it into a cart just to be redirected back to the index file default. Okay, so that's just going to send them back to the home page. So, they'll just add it to their cart, they won't be sent to, to this view. They're sent there, but they're redirected back. So, see how it's not, it's not moving anymore? I'm clicking it, but we end up back at the index file. So, that's what that does, and that's, that's very, very handy. So, now, I guess what we want to do is actually add some stuff to this cart up here, because we create a little cart in our view, remember? So let's um let's come up here and just do a little um little test here. So just just below say um, the includes here. We'll say set up default um, cart values. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll just say if um, is set. 
Okay, so if this variable is set, we're going to use a super global here. Uh, don't get too scared by the name. It's just a, a session super global. If you've done the session lesson, you should be fine. If you haven't done the free session lesson on the website, go to the website and uh, watch that lesson right now before you continue. All right, so I'm just going to create a little session variable there. It's nothing fancy, okay? It just sits inside the array here. So that's the array, and that's just the key in there. And I'm just checking to see, I'm going to put another bracket on there, just checking to see if this has been set. All right, and if it hasn't been set, well, we're going to have to set up a cart because it's probably the first time someone's been to our website, and we need to set up some default values. So let's just do that. Carts are very simple. They're not complicated things. They're very easy. So let's set that up. All right. Okay, so we'll just set up our cart there. And I also want to start, you've got to remember always to say start session. So these, these values become, oops, should be session start. Session start. I always get those two around the wrong way. But all we, after we start that session, session start, these values become available to us. Okay, these super globals. So then we can use them. They don't just last as long as this script runs. They last as long as we have our browser window open. So our cart will stay, you know, with the products we've got in there for the whole time the users on our on our website. So now what I want to do is I want to set up another session. Okay, session super global here, just to hold a bit more data for our cart. So it's a little bit cooler. So I just want to say total items. So we can kind of give the people as they're using our cart. You know, an, an idea of how many items they got in the cart, or the exact amount of items they got in the cart. See how I set it to zero? Because when someone comes to our website for the first time, there's going to be zero items in the cart. Then I want to set up one more. Oops. Make sure these are capitals. Just want to set up the total price. Whoa, gee whiz. Total price. So then, go back here. I want to make this into a string. Now, there's a reason I want to make this into a string, okay? Because, because I've got a zero and I've got the decimal point, I've got the two um, two places after the decimal point. I want to make sure the PHP handles it like that, it displays it like this. Because if I just had that with normal integer, PHP would not display the last two decimal point places. So it's just easier to to do that uh, with a string. All right, so now we've set up some default values for when the customer first comes to our, our, our shop. We can then set them up in a layout. So we'll go into our layouts shop, and just inside here, we'll start out just by inside this bit. So on line 14, we'll say echo session. Actually, we'll print our, so we can just see the contents of it. Much cleverer. Just to show you just how easy a shopping cart really is. So there we go. So I'm just going to print R out our shopping cart. So we can just see that, because it's just an array of data. See how it's just a blank array right now? Because that's what we set up. Okay, so if I was to print out our, you know, our, our total items for say, it's going to say zero. Okay, we'll just refresh that. See that? Zero items in the cart. I've got a cough, sorry. <coughs> mm. Gee whiz, there we go. And just I wanted to um, print out the total price. So we just say total price as well here. Just like that. I do a refresh there. We'll just get rid of the print R off there because we don't need a print R on those ones. And I might even just change those to echo. Just for consistency, I like the echoes. They supposedly they're quicker. I know they are quicker, but it does not matter. To me, I stopped worrying about that years ago. <laughs> Everyone can fight their battles while I just um build my simple little apps and get the bickies, get paid for them. So that's what that's what it's all about. So total price. I'll do a refresh. See that? So zero and zero. So oh, perfect. And what I want to do now is I just want to set up the cart functions. So we'll go back into index, okay? And I want to set up a function. So when someone adds to cart, I want to collect that ID. So when they click on add to cart, there's an ID that gets passed along. You know that value inside here. If I view the properties of the link, 
I'm not going to see it now because we're being redirected, but I do pass over an ID value of 2 or whatever the ID is of the cart. So I want to collect that. So inside here, I want to go ID equals get. I want to just say ID. Okay, so I'm just going to collect that ID. And then I want to say, um, create up a variable. We'll just create one up with giggles and say, add to cart. I know we haven't created this function yet, but that's kind of how we want it to work. And we want to pass in an ID. So as long as we've got an ID passing into this function, we should be able to store uh, that ID in our cart array. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we'll just try, to try that out. We're going to get an error now, no doubt. Yep, call to undefined function add to cart because we haven't created it. So let's create this function. So create a new file and we'll just say save as and we'll say cart functions.php. Before we go any further, we'll go back into our index file and we'll just include our, our cart functions. So I'm just going to copy that, make it a little bit quicker. And I'm just going to say cart. So includes our cart functions. All right. So get back into our cart functions. Open up PHP, and we just want to create our add to cart function. So it's going to be a really simple function. Just do a couple of spaces there. And we'll call it add to cart because that's what we called it. We're going to pass in the parameter of ID. And now basically all we have to do is we just have to test if things are set. Okay, so if the product is already in there, we just want to add one to that that key, okay? So that's what we'll do. We'll say if Oh, that came out a bit wonky, didn't it? It's not meant to go there. Let's see what happened there. That's better. Uh, if is set, okay, and it's going to be called session cart because that's what we called it, remember? It's super global. That's why I can access it inside this function because it's just available everywhere, these global variables. We can just collect them anywhere in our scripts. And we know what we're going to call it. We're going to call it the ID. So at the key of our, the key is going to be our product. Okay, so it's going to be the idea of the product, and the value of that key is going to be the quantity. So, um, if it is set, okay, so if this, this if this does contain that product, this session array, okay, we want to just add one to it. So we can easily do that. If I just grab that, copy, paste that in, and just do two pluses, okay, these two pluses are just increment. So just increment the value by one, okay. So whatever this is going to be the key. Okay, of the session cart, we'll see the keys and the values soon, but just going to be the key, the ID, and the value is going to be the quantity. So it's just going to have that value updated by one. So it's simple as every time someone adds that add to cart button, it's just going to add one, you know, as long as that exists. So else, okay, we know that that doesn't exist in there. So that's just a simple matter of making it exist. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just a matter of saying, okay, if that doesn't exist, let's get that. Copy. We'll create it. Okay, there. So we've actually created it there. And then we just want to say it equals one. Because when someone hits that add to cart button, we're basically going to add one of those to the cart. So now, we'll make sure we return back. Return true. And we'll return true in there as well. So now, if someone, if that is not, if that doesn't exist, okay, it's going to be created there, and it's going to have the ID value as the key, and it's going to have the value of default of one. And if all that doesn't work, we'll just return false. Okay, but it's going to work, so it makes no difference. But all right, so now if we come back here, we're already including that function, and we click back, and we hit add to cart. See that? We just added product two, and there's a quantity of one in there. So if I add to cut again, there's two in there. Add to cut again, there's three in there. Add to cut again, there's four in there. If I add the other one, Halo 3 to the game, the ID number is one, there's a quantity of one in there. Add to cut, add to cut, add to cut. So it's simple as. So now what we have to do, okay, that's pretty cool, isn't it? How easy a shopping cart is to make. So now what we have to do 
is basically show the amount of items and the total price of all those items. And that's going to be quite easy as well. So I guess the first thing we should do probably is count the total items, okay? Because that's the first one on the agenda. So let's create a function that does that. Oh. Function. We'll just say total items. Okay? And we need to pass in the cart, okay, to get the total items. We will start the items variable off as zero. Okay, so it starts at zero. And then we'll just test that it, if it is an array. Okay, because we don't want to loop over something that isn't an array. Because that's just um, <laughs> silly. Because you can't loop over a, something that isn't an array. You know that with a for each loop, you're going to get an error. So we'll just make sure if it's an array. Okay, we'll say for each. Oops. Cart. As you know, that's the ID is the key, okay, and the quantity is the value. So that's what this does. It gives you the key and the value of the array, and it's just going to keep looping around. Okay, and then we can just add to the items variable. Just use a little bit of shorthand here, and we'll just say quantity. So this is basically just going to loop around and add the quantity to the items value each time. So how many in the quantity it will add to uh, the value. And then after all that's happened, all we have to do is return that. Return items. This might even be better called number of items. How about we just call it num items? nothing fancy about this function here so let's um let's go back in there and set this thing up man this is awesome then we come back in here so after we add it to the cart we'll have to set up that sort of stuff so we'll set up say session and we'll just say total items and we'll just say equals and we'll just say our function name total items And we'll just make sure we pass in the actual cart, so our session. Session cart. Okay, so now, all going well, we pass in our cart. It comes in here, okay, we set the total items to zero to start with. Okay, just we're just setting the, the value of that variable up, okay. We check that the cart is an array, okay, so it's got some values in there. We loop over it. We loop over the ID, which is that, and the quantity, which is that. Okay, so ID, quantity, and then we just add it to the number of items. And we just keep looping around and we return the number of items in that function. Total items. And what does that do? That sets up the value for our total items session. And of course, that's in our layouts, total items. So if we add to the cart now, see that? I just added that to the cart, and we've got nine items in our cart. We've got five plus four of those. Add another one. 10. So that's easy does. So now we've done that, let's go back into the cart functions and let's add up some more stuff. What do we have to do? We have to add it the total price. So total price will basically nearly be the same. We'll just have to do uh, basically a database call to just to check for it. So what I'll do is I'll copy this. So line 34 to 21. Then I'll paste that in. And I'll just call this total price. Just to save us time, we'll change num items to price. Okay. And then what I want to do is, I'll make that into a decimal number. I just want to connect to our database. So we'll just say connection equals db connect. Remember we created this function and it's, we can access it inside here as well because we've got our includes. So access it there. We'll check that the cart is an array. Okay, we'll loop over it again. But this time what we'll do is we'll do a little query inside here. Okay, so inside here, just want to set up a query. So we'll go query equals select price, okay, from products. 
and we're just going to put in a where clause here. Okay, where products dot id. Just remove that. Equals. We'll just throw in the id value. Okay, so that value there. So it's going to loop over the products and it's going to find out the price of the actual product. All right, and once it's found out the price of the product, we basically just want to uh, get the result back. So what we'll do is we'll say if result, okay, or we'll do the query underneath it. We'll say result equals MySQL query. Passing our query, so we send it to MySQL. Then we'll come back here. Just make sure we've got some sort of result back. So we'll say if result get rid of get rid of that for now. We'll say item. We'll say item price. So if the item price will equal. We're going to do some shorthand here. Okay, I'm just going to do a MySQL result. And I'm just going to pass in the result variable. Okay, this is another way to get back your stuff. I'm just going to say zero. And then I'm going to say the price column. So we want back the price column. Okay, so this function is pretty cool. It can get back the actual result, not the MySQL fetch array. We just want one of those column values back. And instead of doing that while loop and, all, and or not doing the MySQL fetch array and all that sort of stuff, we can do it in one fell swoop, one line of code, and get back just that column for the value that it returns back. So it'll search looking for the price of each product. The ID goes in there, finds the product, checks that the product actually is in there, then it exists, then it'll add total the item price to that variable okay so the price column uh, from our from our product table and once we've done that all we have to do is basically times it by the quantity so that's what price equals price item price and then we just times it by the quantity and we just keep adding it to price. So we just times the item price by quantity, add it to price, and that will allow us to get the total price. Okay, that little bit of logic there, easy as. So we can just say return price. Okay, so now we can get the total price easy. We'll just re we'll get rid of that return num items. Just make sure that's out there. Just return it right at the end. So now, make sure that's all neat, and that's perfect. So that's pretty cool. So now all we need to do is go back into our index file, just copy that, paste that in there, and go total price for this one, total price for this function call just see what happens so now if we add one to the cart see that we get a total price there that is totally sweet so if I add another one of these um, I might actually bring out the price of these so we'll go back into our views our index view and I'll just put in our price in here so I'll just copy that and I'll just put a dash there And we'll just say um, price. So that's the name of that column in our in our field, in our table. And I'll just make sure it's formatted. So I'm just going to use a function here called number format. It's just going to allow me to have a much cooler looking number and have the decimal places on there. So we want two decimal places, just so it looks more like money. A dollar sign there. Let me look at that. Yeah, dollar sign, da da da, price. Okay, so now when we refresh, yeah, $44. So if I add another one of these on, 
that should add forty-four uh, dollars to there. So we add in another one, and bingo, we add forty-four dollars onto there. So it works perfectly. How cool is that? So we can add another forty-four dollars onto there, another forty-four dollars onto there, another forty-four dollars onto there. You know what I mean? So it's working perfectly. That one's forty-four dollars as well, but that's totally cool. We should change maybe the price of each of those to um to display the difference. So I'll go into here and I'll just select the database, job list, products, browse. We'll just edit fight night. Make this one fifty bucks. Just so we can see a bit of a difference there. Refresh here, and then if I add to cart now. Ooh, it's updating everything because it's looping over and finding out the total price. But if I add to cart now, that should be um, 864. Yep, 864. So that's really, really cool. That total price. So we'll just make that formatted nice as well. Go back into our layouts and we'll just say for the price, we'll put our dollar sign and we'll create our number. This is just a Built-in function for PHP makes it so easy. Don't have to think. Put in a two. And presto, we have a total price. And now that looks like money. Hooray! So that all looks really good. We've got 19 items, so maybe we should say that. In our cart. 19 items in our cart. Maybe we should even say put a HR in here just to separate it off and we'll just say cart. And then we'll just do a refresh. Yeah, so maybe if I just call that shopping cart. Yeah, so now that's sort of separated from our logic here. But that's really, really cool. So our shopping cart's got 19 items in there. There's that price. So I think I'll stop there. And, um, yeah, we'll move on. We'll do the checkout. And we'll start looking at PayPal probably after the next lesson. So, yeah, let's keep moving on, babies. Awesome.